Oh, thank you, Brad. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think we have decided we're gonna try to keep the uh, Zoom going uh, for the Monday nights, even when we get back to the Imperial Alano Club over there in Paramount, where we can gather personally. Hopefully that will be soon. I would, I would love to be gathering with all my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's been much too long. All right. Um, anyways, tonight we're going to, um, I'm going to, I wanted to uh, speak about the importance of uh, God's word. Um, of course, the, the Bible, that is God's word. And um, so that's what the Lord put on my heart to share with you guys tonight. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the um, opportunity to share with everybody about, about you, your word, and the things that you have for us, that the opportunity that you have given us to come to know you and to help you to be known also. And Lord, I lift up the uh, Zoom continually and, and that we have no problems getting that message out and uh, let people come into the the relationship that we have also, Lord, and that we can all be as one. We love you, praise you, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, uh, I wanted to start off with um, Ephesians chapter five, and, and it, it's about um, husbands, love your uh, wives, and it was um, in verse 25, it says, husband loves your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave herself, gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. And so this is talking about uh, Jesus. Of course, he died. For the church in which we are the church the people the christians we are the church but it says that you know that the church is his bride and that um he he is cleansing her by the washing of the water of the word and that is what what we what we study the bible the we study the bible that's god's word we believe that the bible is god's word the, the living word of god we come together, study it, grow, grow in it, seek strength in it, and fellowship together. And so, therefore, the, the importance of the, the Bible, it, it has everything that we need to, to come to know who God is and, and how to come into a relationship and for our salvation. And so it's very important to us. And it's important to everybody. For, for us, those of us that have already uh, been Christians for a long time and been, been following and walking with the Lord, for a long time, you know, when when it's when the the Bible says to walk by faith, I believe that means that we are to walk according to the things that we have learned in the Bible, and we that we try to apply it to our lives. Oh, all right, um, I was going to look at um, in John chapter thirteen when Jesus was washing the feet of the disciples, and and uh, of course Peter. He says, oh, no, Lord, don't wash, don't, don't wash my feet. Don't do this thing, you know, not far be it from you, Lord, don't do that. And, and Jesus says, you know, if, if uh, I don't do this for you, then you have no part in me. And, and uh, be, then, then Peter says, well, and, uh, you know, don't just wash my feet, but wash all of me. And Jesus says, you know, who, somebody that's already taken a bath doesn't need to be uh, washed again, but, you know, just to wash their feet. And then in, in uh, chapter 15, when he's uh, speaking about the, the true vine, Jesus says, um, he says, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And so it was because of the word that he spoke to, these, to his disciples that they were already clean. But he was washing their feet to um, show that that's something that we need to do with each other. You know, when, when uh, we're going through hard times, or if we're stumbling and we're, we're, we're failing in our walk with the Lord, that we can, you know, the countenance of a brother, you know, and, and as iron sharp, sharpens iron. And, you know, we, we try to help each other out, hopefully in a loving way, you know, to point out the, the problems that we have so we can try to be a washing of each other's feet. And then, of course, Jesus says, but we're, we're already washed because of the word that I had spoken to you. 
So we're, we're already washed, we're cleansed, yes, but we need a daily cleansing, a daily to get into his word on our personal, own personal basis. You know, and, and um, I wanted to look at um, Matthew chapter four, where Jesus had just been baptized and he's, he's um, in the wilderness being tempted by, by Satan, by the devil. So in, starting chapter four, verse three, it says in Matthew chapter four, verse three, it says, now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so here, here he is talking about, he was hungry, you know, and, and, and uh, the enemy Satan is trying to tempt him to tell him to turn, the, turn the, the stone into bread so that he can eat that bread. But Jesus, he said, it is written. And, that, and, and he said that against all of those temptations. It is written, you know, and, and the, the things that are written in the Bible, they can help us in our times of, of, of troubles when we're being tempted or, or any other situation that, that comes to us in life. Everything in our life, it, it, can, it can be solved. If it's a problem, it can be solved in, in the Bible, in, in, the, in God's word. And then, of course, he said, Man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And we have in our hands in our Bibles, that, that, is, that is the word of God. We consider this to be the, the, the true, the living word of God. And so it does us good to, to uh, read on it and, and to study it. Um, in uh, in uh, John chapter 1, um, it, uh, it says that Jesus is the word. You know, he says... Um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And, and then and, um, then it says, and the word was God. And then a little bit later, it says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's speaking of Jesus. Jesus is the word, the word of God. And so um, I was going to look at um, John chapter 6. And it um, in verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So if we come to him, we shall never never hunger and never thirst. He says, I am the bread of life. You know, it's it's like like food, it's food to us, you know, um, that that we get nourishment from. So, anyways, um in in uh John chapter 6, in starting in verse 51, he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. In, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. <clears throat> For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. So anyways, he, he was um, telling them about, about how he is the bread of life and that, that um, if, if they were to eat of his flesh and to drink of his blood, and, and they, they started quarreling among themselves. How could this be? You know, they're Jewish people. They're not supposed to be eating flesh and blood like that, especially being cannibalistic. They, they weren't getting it. They didn't understand. But us as Christians, we understand now that what he was speaking of is is what we do in communion when we we take of the the bread and 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 the the um the blood the juice that it it's his body and that it's his blood then of course they started saying stuff like you know how could this be and many of them were turning away and and they stopped following him his own his own disciples but then he turned to the 12 and he says will you too will you also turn away 
And then they said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And they understood that. He has the words that lead to eternal life. And that's what the Bible is. The Bible has the words that lead to eternal life, how we can spend eternity with God, with, with Jesus, with the Lord in heaven. And that's something that each one of us need. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We all need to work that out. We know what it's going to take. Many of us that, that are, we think we've gone so far away, but if, if we work, walk, work it out with God and talk it over with him in prayer, that we can po quite possibly come into a good loving relationship with the Lord. Um, the next one I wanted to look at was um, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And so it's nourishing. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. That you don't lean on your understanding, but acknowledge God. And we acknowledge him when we learn the things in the Bible, when we start studying these things. We, do, we didn't know about the, the things of righteousness until we started reading them, until somebody told us. I had to, I had to be taught by somebody else, too. I didn't just come in and all of a sudden I know all this stuff. I, I sit I sit in Bible studies at church. I sit in the other Bible studies with other, other people leading the Bible studies. I listen to Bible studies on the radio or on YouTube. Any chance I can get any more days because uh, I wasted a lot of my lifetime not in study. And, and, and that's really been a conviction in my own heart. Um, the other one was um, Psalm 119 verse 5. It's a, uh, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know, we're, we're in the, in, in the darkness, you know, we live in a dark, perverse generation here. We, any, anybody could admit it right now. We're, we are in the midst of darkness in this world. We need his word to be that light, to get us through this stuff, to lead us and guide us. Lord, help us. Uh, I'm going to look at Hebrews chapter four. In um, chapter 4, verse 12. Oh, wrong one. Here it is. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even into the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God. It, it, it will meet us right where we're at. It's alive. You know, I, I read it last year, and, and then all of a sudden I read it again this year, and it, it seems like it means a little bit different to me. That the word is alive, and it meets you right where you're at in, in your walk with the Lord, in um, your, your level of understanding of, of God's word and the, the way you've been living your life. And hopefully, you know, if, if it brings you a little bit of conviction about the, the stuff that's in it, then uh, maybe it'll, you'll, you'll find a way to grow through that when you get that understanding that you've been living not according to the ways of, of God. Um, in uh, Hebrews chapter 5, starting with verse 12, let's see what it says here. It talks about spiritual immaturity. It says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And when I first heard this, this is what brought me the conviction because I've been living my life not knowing the things of God. And then all of a sudden I'm learning about the things of God in the Bible. And, and uh, it says here that by now I ought to be a teacher. And, and I, but I, I need those, the, 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 the milk, the milk of, of the word, you know, and, and that's because I was a babe. I was a grown man, but I was a babe. And it says here that I should be teachers. You know, each one of us as men, if we're the man of the household, we should be the high priest of that household. And make sure that other people come to the knowledge of, of God and who he is and what he's done for us. 
We are, we are to be the high priest. We have a responsibility. Um, I want to look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And, and that says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We, we need it to, to learn how to live our life in, in the ways of righteousness. You know, before, before I, I, I started studying the Bible, I, I didn't know about the things that, that were against God's will, that, that were considered sin. I was living my life in sin. I, I was, I was uh, doing the things that, that this world would say, oh, it's okay, you have the right to do that. But in God's word, he says, no, you should not be living your life in, in that way. But according to my ways, you know, when it says, uh, lean not on your own understanding, you know, but in your, all your ways, acknowledge him. And, and that's the way we should be living our life. Then the last one is in 2 Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 19. It says, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy or, of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Some people are saying, oh, but this is just written by men. Well, it was written by men, but it was by holy men that, that were, were led by the Holy Spirit of God, that they, that they had a discernment in their heart to understand the things of God, and that, that God was actually leading them to, to write these things down. You know, and, and sometimes every, every once in a while we, hear, we might hear something from God in our own conscience because we know that we're doing the wrong thing. Or maybe he says, do something that's right. Hey, share me with those people over there, something like that. You know, and, and, and then you go over there and you're like all worried. Oh, no, do I have to do that? Oh, no. And you go over there and you share with these people. And all of a sudden, come to find out they're brothers and sisters in Christ, too. They already know. You already know the Lord, you know, and what a blessing that is. But anyways, finally, in, in, in all this, you know, it talks about food and stuff and, and drink and, and uh, the, the word that, that um, you know, it's nourishment to, our, to us. And um, I, I, I think of the, the uh, big, um, the big feast that's going to be happening. You know, we spoke about the, the church and, and Jesus, the, the, um, that, that the church is the bride of Jesus. And, you know, one day there's going to be that, that big wedding. It's going to be a big wedding feast. And we're all been invited. Everybody is invited to go there. But, you know, you need to get prepared for it now. You need to be clothed in that righteousness. You need to put on that full armor of God. How are you going to know how, how, to, how to be dressed for this occasion if you don't start reading the Bible now? And learn what it means by put on the full armor of God. Only if you read about it in the Bible, or if somebody has to help, if, if somebody helps you to learn, will you be able to do these things? So I want to pray a prayer that you guys that you would uh, seek out the things of God, that you would seek Him first in His righteousness, and all these things would be added unto you, because that big feast is going to happen, and you don't want to miss that. That's going to be the best party ever. And it's going to be glorious. And I, I expect to be there. I expect my loved ones to be there. And I would love for everybody else to be there. He's done it for everybody. So we'll pray real quick. And dear Lord Jesus, and, and, and I pray for the people out there that hear this that don't know you yet. Lord, I pray that they come into a relationship with you, that they read the Bible and understand that everything is in there that they need to come into a relationship, to know who you are. And those of us that have already know you, Lord, I, I pray that we, we know that it's uh, very important that we continue reading your word, that we have not yet arrived, that there's always something that, to teach us in your word, that it, it might mean us something a little different this week than what it did last week, Lord. Lord, things are happening so fast in this world that it seems like the end times are near, but Lord, you said to occupy until you come. So, Lord, we know you haven't come yet, but, Lord, we do say, Lord, please come quickly. We, we look forward to being with you. We look forward to your comfort because this world 
it really needs you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen.